Here we go here. Going for the jibe. No, I don't think he can do it. Okay, so good stuff so far for Team New Zealand. Into a controlling position. Ed Baird on the ropes at the moment. Has to do something. I think we're going to see him go for the spec flip, PJ. Well, that's what he's heading right for us. Another 100 metres or so, we could jump on board both boats. Still got to come quite a long way, though, to get out here. Yep. There's nothing like the spectator fleet we saw the other day when they sought refuge in that. I think both boats in this wind speed would be fighting for the right-hand side. And the big question is, how much do you have to pay for it? If you can get an even start, well, no question, the right is better. But if it all comes down to how much you have to pay, and we saw a link in the race where the Kiwis ripped their spinnaker. Pay too much. Right, so it's a lingi now bringing the bow up. Now Team New Zealand are following them. One of the things Ed Baird could do maybe is do a few circles to try and... Yeah, Dean Bark here just letting Ed circle around. This definitely tells me that uh, the Kiwis are looking for the right-hand side. Probably trying to set up for... Split tack, split out to the right-hand side of the course. Ed, on the other hand, just trying to get out of this controlling position. I think he's just thinking right now, get off the line, even. Right, we're coming up to two minutes now. Team New Zealand have been doing very well now. So the final couple of minutes is going to be vital. Well, really, the next minute will be vital. That's where they lay their beds. I like what Team New Zealand are doing here. I think full control above the uh, ley line. Look for Team New Zealand attack here. <laughs> Lingy tags, Team New Zealand follows straight away here. Forget there. High risk at the moment. Still plenty of time to kill, I think. Team New Zealand haven't got the overlap though. They were trying to get that, but gee, they're still pretty close to the line. And the time left, they could easily get to the line. They're going to scrub some time off. Dan Bark attacking immediately to Lewis of Alingi. And now here comes another quick tack coming back from Alingi to try and shake off. And they're also trying to kill time as well, Jimmy. Big question here is, is that ley line for the race committee. If Team New Zealand can get up, keep a lingy to windward and hold them above the race committee ley line, Ed they Ed can do the full shutout start. It will be in huge trouble. Shut out, but think of a line coming down from the committee boat. If we get an aerial shot, you'll see a line coming down from the aerial. And will the bow there of the lingy actually take them outside the committee boat or are they inside into the final minute now? There's the committee boat. Now you can see it. It looks like a lingy may be just inside. This to me is looking very, very oh, good oh, for Team New Zealand. Here. Must tack here. Team New Zealand must tack straight over it. Well, if they can, then they've got them. They've got them shut out. Surely, Jimmy. Must tack. A little delay there. Now they're coming back and they're lining up to line down the start. They just let off the hook there. I really thought there was an opportunity. Right, they're winding up now for the final 20 seconds. Certainly, Team New Zealand were in a position to cut a lingy outside the, the ley line from the committee boat. Here we are to the final 10 seconds. Really winding up. Both bowmen calling their skippers up. Go for it. The start. Race 7. 32nd America's Cup. The mark, mark, yellow first. Team New Zealand down to Lewis in the head. Wingy coming off the right hand side there and getting in this direction, what I think is the favourite side. I really thought they were in trouble there and uh, just wondered if Dean Barker could have put a little bit more pressure on there. By cutting them out to the right in their final 90, 60 seconds. Exactly. That uh, last or minute. past the, uh, the line under the committee boat. Anyway, it didn't happen. We'll look at that, that later. Very but good. now the key thing is to uh, see what happens now as they hunker down in this breeze. And virtual eye giving it to Team New Zealand by a metre. It's bow to bow. Now it is a lingi out by a metre. It's nothing in it. It's an absolute bow to bow and a trial of strength. And currently we've got over 16 knots here on North Star. It's fresh out there.
more well, fresh by what we've had so far. The out of our race like this, the right hand side is certainly advantaged. You have the right of way tack, the starboard hand side. And if the Lingy think that they can't live there, if they start to lose meters on the virtual eye, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them tack over and get to the right hand side. But right now, just looking off the North Star, they seem to be hanging in there, and I wonder if they're getting a little bit of a right shift. This has really come down to a regatta of seizure chances. Here goes the Lingy tacking away. Yeah, good sign for Team New Zealand there. Able to force Alingi off, but took quite a bit of time. Certainly, uh, well, it's probably holding for four or five minutes, I think, off the star line there on starve attack before they could force Alingi to get onto port. Virtualized showing New Zealand 20 metres ahead, but you must remember that Alingi have tacked and have paid a penalty for that. Team New Zealand must also do the same. So round figures you lose between 20 and 25 metres in attack, depending. Yeah, about 20, 25 metres around the boat length, maybe a little more. But I think once Team New Zealand tack, it will be very, very similar to how it was before. Probably a few metres either way. Well, the key issue is now Lingi's tacked away. Would it be in Team New Zealand's interest to go with them? Because if you allow this, remembering a Lingi will come on the hand advantage. In other words, they're going to have right of way. So it's been a fascinating start to race number seven of the 32nd America's Cup. During the start sequence in the final 90 seconds, it looked as though Dean Barker and Team New Zealand had the opportunity on port to take a lingi outside the line below the committee boat. But they came back on starboard. It was a slingshot start, and it's been even from then on. And we see a lingi is tacked off, but Virtual Eye has Team New Zealand in front just as they work out to the right. First cross of the seventh race of the 32nd America's Cup. We're live here on One Sport. And is Emirates Team New Zealand advanced enough? Liebauer. Brad Butterworth waited a long time, Tom, but picked a very good moment to come back onto starboard tack. Yeah, well, he would have probably preferred um, a nice little right-hand shift so he could come back uh, a bit closer to them, but uh, uh, Juan Vila was telling him how much room he had, and uh, you want to be able to do two or three tacks before you get uh, shut down on the ley line because it can be a long, uh, miserable ride yes. up that starboard tack ley line if you're standing on the gas of the other uh, yacht. And uh, so they'll be looking to mix it up a wee bit. And that uh, wind direction seemed quite fair, and the Kiwis were comfortably able to make a lee bow stick. And in fact, I think if they'd wanted to, they could have slid across if they wanted right. to the right. Okay, so they were right in the middle of the course, weren't they, at that stage? And you see that advantage line still with New Zealand of a boat length and a half. They tack back, and uh, Alingi responds. Now, it was in this situation on leg three of the previous race where just a little bit of pressure allowed Alingi to get in front, wasn't it? So we've got to watch this with a great deal of interest. Here goes Alingi now. So Alingi tacks now, and Team New Zealand will follow them in. So now the pendulum will go from 14 metres, 16 metres to Team New Zealand. They're above the ley line, remember? And the Lingi's just got their bow out. So in this position, it will be a Lingi who's around the top mark first. Boy, oh boy, this is close. What pressure it is on the cruise in this way to breeze. See a laugh here from that there. Yeah, it's a laugh up. Right, I'll explain a defensive move. Expand, Jimmy. Okay, so the boat on the right here, a Lingi, the leeward boat, has right of way. The windward boat, which is Emirates Team New Zealand, as windward boat must keep clear. So we saw a Lingi there do a laugh, laugh Team New Zealand up. See the umpire signal there, that means overlap. The boats are overlapped, and the Lingi has full luffing rights. Now, if I was Ed Baird, I would slow the game down, luff Team New Zealand up, and try and get them stopped. I think this is a big opportunity for a Lingi here to take a little jump for the downwind run here. This will be real interesting. So the defence is on from a Lingi to try 
and slow down Team New Zealand out to the left. Zealini building speed here, Team New Zealand getting stuck in irons. And Team New Zealand, remember they had the overlap, I will watch that sign soon, there won't be an overlap. And they're clear now, so that was a splendid defensive move by Ed Beard. Now they're in the zone, expand Jimmy before the hoist. In the zone, two battling zone around the top mark. Lingy in there, clear, no overlap. Mark one, race seven of the America's Cup. It has been a thriller on this first leg. Team New Zealand leading for most of the way. Super tactics, brilliant defense by a Lingy. Totals up that they lead by seven seconds. Now here comes the hoist from Team New Zealand. Textbook sets by both boats to the bow team taking down the headsaws now. Obviously, don't need those until the next upwind leg. But even though Ed Baird was able to jump out probably about two lengths, still Team New Zealand in a very powerful position. You see them just stuck in one of the quarter waves behind Alingi and in a great position to attack down this run. So, Dean Barker full of concentration. This is a very tense moment for both these teams. Emirates Team New Zealand, a pretty good start. Dean Barker did the job well again, and my word, he's impressed everyone over here, and he had his detractors. Don't make any doubt about that, but he has really shown that he's a class act. Now we're seeing whether he can get, he and Terry Hutchinson and his crew can get Emirates Team New Zealand into a position where their wind might just affect Alinghi. I think it is, you know, Lingi uh, look a little bit awkward there. See the spinning yes. just uh, collapsed again. Kiwi's really positioned their boat nicely, and uh, even though Lingi's going to, she's going to have air behind, but only after the Kiwis uh, move forward, uh, almost to a position where they would have overtaken. Then the British team is down and go uh, at equal speed. Yes, they're um, all over a Lingi at the moment and affecting the spinnaker. We can see what's happening. This could be a vital moment in this race. Let's go to Martin Tasker and Peter Lester. To windward of a Lingi. A Lingi now in a defensive mode. Boats on the ley line. It's Brad Butterworth. If anyone can defend the lead, it'll be Butterworth expert in that area. Boats about, about. Alinghi still ahead. The Kiwis in the position. If they could soak down to put the wind shadow to affect the angle that Alinghi are sailing at. All it will take will be one way. The overlap. Boats are overlap. That's the light. The overlap light that we have is also on the boats, that's how the, the teams know that the, the overlap rule is coming into force. And they also seem to be virtually on the ley line. Now, this is where we're going to be hearing that call, hold your proper course, explain. Now, the thing to look at here, we'll come back to hold your proper course, is to look at the stability of the sails. It's a sure fire sign of one of the sails, and, and I'd be looking at a lingi starts to look a bit soft in terms of the pressure in the sail are being affected by the windward boat. So Emirates Team New Zealand, in terms of the advantage line, now are rolling over the top of a lingi. A lingi. Emirates Team New Zealand now take the lead on the second leg. In this vital race, the New Zealanders are in a must-win situation. So the afterguard of Emirates Team New Zealand have done a fabulous job to roll down with Alinghi under Spinnaker on the second leg. So now, which way are they going to go? Here comes the drop, the spike from Team New Zealand. And they are going to take the left-hand gate looking up the course. And that will leave the right-hand gate to a lingi. So Team New Zealand lead halfway through the race. Remember, a lingi led by seven seconds here at mark number two. It is Team New Zealand leading by 14 seconds. 
little surprise there to see Team New Zealand give the Lingy the right hand gate. I mean, the obvious explanation is that maybe the gate on that side that Team New Zealand rounded had an advantage. It was set for a wind direction and was a little further upwind, which gave them an advantage. I mean, definitely it was the better manoeuvre for the crew. But I've, uh, honestly, I'm a little surprised that they didn't go the right-hand gate. Well, we're getting information from our director, David Turner, from Dave Snackenberg, our virtual eye expert. There was an 11-metre bias to the left-hand mark, which uh, reinforces the point you make, Jimmy. But a lingi are out to the right. And we have seen the power of the right earlier on. But whether or not Team New Zealand can nail that home, because, wow, they have got out to... They're between 50 and 60 metres at the moment. And that's going to be uh, an advantage. Can they nail that home? because they had the chance to go to the right, regardless of the bias. And we saw how powerful that art was. We've heard sailors say for years, the power of the right, meaning how we saw Alinghi exploit that because Team New Zealand could not cross in the final stages leading up to one. Expect to see Alinghi come back at Emirates Team New Zealand. These very short metres up now working towards the starboard ley line will be crucial. Alinghi there just bobbled in a big way. But now we can see the bow of Alinghi zoning in onto the stern of Emirates Team New Zealand. That's a fabulous shot as Emirates Team New Zealand leave our tank, Alinghi. Alinghi straight into the tank. The boats are overlap. So Alinghi are coming right back at Emirates Team New Zealand as we work towards the starboard ley line. Two minutes and five seconds to the starboard ley line. So Elingi have just on two minutes. Two thirds up the back, up, up the windward beat. But Elingi, who are pushing Emirates Team New Zealand very hard for yet another lead change. Can the Kiwis defend as Elingi come back yet again on starboard? Again, the intersection of the boats. Elingi have a piece of Emirates Team New Zealand. The New, Zealand, uh, New Zealanders are pushing hard, coming in from the left. Alinghi this time look a bit more bow forward they, than the, what they were. Now Emirates Team New Zealand go into their squeeze, a delayed tack, but Alinghi are a little bit bow forward. Alinghi not surviving, they are straight out of there, but the Swiss boat looks to be tacking a little bit better up the second one would be. The numbers tumble down on the New Zealand lead as a lingi really really do squeeze what an appropriate word that is because they're squeezing everything out of their boat everything out of this match as they continue to attack the Kiwis up this penultimate leg and could this be the penultimate leg of the 32nd America's Cup the Kiwis are doing all they can to stop it the Swiss all they can to make it happen to Hang on to the cut with this deciding race. Match point they're on, let's not forget, if, as if we could. Boy, there's going to be some action coming here at the top mark. Here, we so go. here comes Team New Zealand tacking now. This is going to be very interesting, PJ. Lingi have the starboard tack here. The Team New Zealand, on both boats dialed down here. This could it result in a penalty for one of the boats here. I think he's on starboard. Well, expect a flag, there's a flag. And they've forced Team New Zealand away. We heard Brad Butterworth say, aim for a stern. Slam dunk here by Lingi. And Lingi is right on top of them. The lead changes again. The question here is, can they lay the mark on Port Oh, yellow, yellow flag. Team New Zealand. Penalty, Team New Zealand. Team New Zealand has got a penalty against it. Right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Just let's get around the top mark, though, for a start. Alinghi has got their bow out in front. Alinghi will lead around the top mark. So the lead changes for the fourth time. Here we go to mark number three. 
into the last leg of the race. Team New Zealand led at the last mark by 14 seconds after running and gunning Alinghi down. And it stops at 11 seconds. And it's Alinghi who are leading. Right. Now let's just quickly go back and wait for, we'll just wait till Team New Zealand hoist and get underway. And we'll talk about what they've got to do. We saw they were quicker downhill. But Team New Zealand have got a penalty outstanding yeah, now. Fires, uh, approaching the top mark. Uh, the sub about Alinghi bore away and held her course. Uh, New Zealand bore away to go uh, below her. She didn't keep clear. Subsequently, Alinghi had to avoid her and that was a penalty on yellow Team New Zealand. Righto, to expand on that, Jimmy Spittle. Yeah, I wonder if that was the race just there, PJ. We talked about how there could be some fireworks up the top. Alinghi on the right-hand side, starboard hand, right of way. Team New Zealand tap. We're ahead of out about, had to do a big duck to get down. We see it here. Here goes Team New Zealand, tacking over onto Port Tack. Alinghi puts the bow down straight away. Team New Zealand, bow down, trying to get below Bel Alinghi. It's not enough. If the boats held their course right there, there will be a collision. Look for Alinghi here to luff and protest, and that's a penalty, Team New Zealand. And look, PJ, I think it's going to be very difficult to come back from that. Absolutely. Well, we heard Brad Butterworth setting up for it, and uh, really, Terry Hutchins should have been aware of it. Frankly, Team New Zealand would have been better to follow the leader around the top mark and not expose themselves to that manoeuvre. Yeah, just watching the onboard shot there, guys, with the hands in the air. From what sounded by the umpires, a very, very clear decision. And certainly from the helicopter shot, it, it did look like it was a fair call. As you said, PJ, the other option was to simply follow Alinghi around the top mark, get into that attacking position and try and make the pass down the bottom, which they did the run before. Well, they've done that before and surely Team New Zealand must have known they're going to be exposed there and target practice because certainly the aerial shot was conclusive and there was no doubt that that was a penalty. I think Team New Zealand may have been a little further forwards or up the ladder rung, you know, closer to the top than maybe they had first thought when they tapped. Just couldn't get the bow down enough to, to clear a lingy who were approaching on start attack. It's very easy to be critical here sitting here, but it's certainly a, an error there that will be very, very costly. Yeah, definitely less than five knots. I mean, I think there's zero knots at the race committee. I think it's offshore. Rich Reichelsdorfer is just showing us here the instrument on North Star. The wind has gone 30 degrees. It's shifted 33-0, Jimmy. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, here we go. Both boats setting up generous to go upwind on a downwind leg. That just shows how big a shift. This, oh, it's all on now, PJ. This can advantage Team New Zealand. They no longer have to do penalty in a circle. I'm not going to go into it. It'll be too complicated to explain explain it. This is very, very good for Team New Zealand right now. So down comes the pole. And we'll get a call in a moment just how far to go to the finish. So about just over 500 metres to the finish. This is dramatic what's happening at the moment. Really dramatic. This incredible finish. This is very close. PJ. Team New Zealand are going to be close to be able to do this. This is going to go down to the wire. Team New Zealand are coming down, but they've got to undertake the penalty. Team New Zealand are just having their lead eroded. It's just going before their very eyes. Inside 400 metres to the finish. They've gone trawling as well. Oh! It's ticking against them, down to 50 metres. Team New Zealand are off, but they've got to undertake a penalty. Jimmy will talk about that. They're going to do a 270 rather than a 360. Can you believe it? Talk about high drama. Four Team New Zealand cross the finish line. They must complete a 360 degree turn, or really attack a 270 degree turn. Now they have one of two options. If they think they've got enough lead, through and do it just on the finish line. 
If they think they don't, they'll go down and try and set up an attacking position. Virtual I give it to Team New Zealand. That means the lead has changed five times in this incredible race seven. What's How many races of the century can we have in this regatta? Right, uh, coming down to the line, and Team New Zealand have got it. As they have got, got the breeze, that is. They've got to want to take the penalty. Just over 140 metres to go. If Team New Zealand did not have the penalty, they would win it. All down to completing the penalty, PJ. We can see Team New Zealand's got much better here. They're doing two to one over Alingi. From where we are on North Star, North Alingi is out, to, well, that shop is out to the left. Here goes Team New Zealand. They're going through the penalty now. They're going through their penalty. What a way to finish. Race number seven. Team New Zealand are going for it. Can they get their bow down? Can they undertake the penalty? Here goes Team New Zealand. They're coming down. A lingy out to the left. Team New Zealand, can they accelerate? Yes. Yes, can they do it? They're getting up. We need a high shot to be able to see it. Team New Zealand coming down. Alingi, Alingi's going to get there. Alingi have done it. Alingi have won by two. The 20, the 3rd of July 2007, and the America's Cup stays in Europe.